So to really understand the meaning of Klein zones, and to understand the meaning of any artwork really, we need to take a closer look at the history of Klein's career up to that point, and the history of the art ideas that he was building on. There are many different intertwining threads of ideas that played out over the first half of the 20th century. Here's a 10 second history of one of those threads. It goes like this. Art used to start with a real thing, and then art would try to copy it. The more the art resembles the real thing, the better it was. Then, art could start with a real thing, but make it look different. The more ingenious your way of making it look different, the better. Finally, final step. Art doesn't have to start with a real thing at all. Art is its own thing. It can be a completely original phenomenon in itself. Boom. Just wrote your first modern art history term paper for you. You're welcome. Now, how does this relate to Klein? Yves Klein is probably still best known for his blue monochromes. These paintings are about that last step in the 10 second history that I just gave you. The idea that art could stop representing things and be its own thing unto itself. His monochromes look kind of like some other paintings that were trying to embody the same ideas, like this one. When the Russian suprematist painter Kazimir Malevich painted this in 1915, he's trying to really throw down the gauntlet and say, no, my painting is not an abstraction of a real thing. It does not represent a real thing. It is not an imitation of a real thing. It is simply a black square to be taken on its own terms. And that's probably why he titled the piece Black Square and not Black Bear at Midnight. Klein's monochromes are definitely inspired by this work, but they push this idea forward a bit in both their concept and their technical execution. Conceptually, Klein isn't satisfied with leaving the conversation where Malevich left it by saying, this painting is just a painting. He truly believes that his art is a sensation, a feeling, something that we might call today a state of mindfulness. In other words, his painting is more than a painting. He doesn't even want it to be a painting. So he actually does a couple of very smart things with his craft and his use of painting technology. First of all, he uses his patented blue. And when I say patented, I mean he literally patented this color of blue. So this incredibly deep but flat blue, it obliterates the picture plane. What do I mean by that? I mean, it's so flat and so hypnotic that if you stare at it, it seems to have infinite depth and you can no longer tell really where the canvas is in front of you. It becomes space. And you think about it, if you've used a glossy paint, um, you'd see specular highlights, reflections. You're aware of where that reflective surface is. But when the paint is purely matte, it's a huge question. That's what we call obliterating the picture plane in this case. The other sort of technology thing he'd do is he'd mount the monochromes on pegs that pushed it off the wall a few inches. And so that would further mess with your ability to perceive it as a flat painting on the wall. So Klein is desperately trying to get to the point where his art can be just pure sensation. But he has this problem where no matter what he does, it's still a more or less rectangular thing on the wall. It's still an object. And for him, the physical aspect of his artwork is holding him back. And so Klein is way ahead of where some people are in the NFT debate. He's not asking if something without a physical aspect can be art. He's going further, saying that to be art, something needs to have no physical aspect. This idea of an artwork that is more pure idea and less physical material, well, that idea is sometimes called dematerialization. And it's absolutely crucial to point out here that Klein is a true believer in this idea. And none of this works if he doesn't have a long history of exploring these ideas across multiple artworks and exhibitions that he's invested his whole career into. Around the same time that he was preparing for the zones, he was drawing up plans for buildings that would use only pillars of fire and columns of blown air. 
It's, it's crazy stuff, sure. But there's a tidy story connecting the monochromes to this architecture of air and finally to the zones. So the zones were absolutely the apotheosis of Klein's quest to present an artwork that was pure idea. Because according to Klein, these zones weren't empty. He claimed that they were imbued with the sensibility of the color blue. And so when he presented the zones at a later exhibition, he, he stood in the gallery and he loudly declared, first there is nothing, then there is a deep nothing, then a blue depth. In Klein's own words, what he wanted to achieve with these works was, quote, the creation of an ambience, of a real pictorial climate, one that is therefore invisible. He claimed that the sensation of the color blue was there in the room with you, even if you couldn't see it. He claimed, he claimed that this exhibition would literally impregnate viewers with the color blue. When the visitors to that exhibition came home, they would find that that was true in at least one sense. That cocktail you drank with the coin tro and the methylene blue, it dyed your pea blue. And because I know that Klein had devoted his life to these ideas of immateriality, I believe him. Klein had created an artwork that contained the sensibility or the idea or produced the sensation of a visual experience without relying on paint, canvas, or any material at all. And of course, he had to bring the entire history of his career to bear to give that idea credibility. But yeah, I, I believe in it. And a lot of other people did too. Okay, so I've talked a little bit about Eve Klein and his mystical invisible artworks. But what does this mean for NFTs? Cry the NFT enthusiasts and skeptics alike. Well, first of all, recognizing half century old art ideas like this, it goes a long way to legitimizing the claim that no, an artwork does not need to have a physical aspect. And that's important because that's the first part of the debate that we talked about in the opening after looking at that Mark Cuban tweet. But I think if you're working in NFT art and you really want to be an artist, it's important to think about artistic value as separate from collectability. And Eve Klein is a really great example of someone who truly believed that an artwork was an idea, that an artwork was an experience, but that an artwork was never a physical thing. Okay, so that's established. But guys, let's talk about the second part uh, uh, of that understanding. Let's talk about the elephant in the room here. Let's talk about the money. Well, you see, this part of the conversation is where Eve Klein goes from run-of-the-mill clever art boy to true genius. If you think these invisible zones of immaterial pictorial sensibility are fascinating, wait till you get to the next part of this video and wait till you hear what these things cost. <laughs>